story. Dear, there ain't none this way of turning you gold. Stuck to my arm as tight as my clothes were to my wet body, you, like a paradox, radiating. Slowly making this palette painting from baby shadings of pale blue, wet black, top saturated. The space taken up within, driving the color one spin through thin air like thinning hair landing in your eyes on the opposite side of the color wheel. So none of their owners never say so. Brown eyes are absolutely beautiful. There was more than any. Don't you let that breeze ever speak anything other, trust me, I know. I know the way the draft slips in through the doors, the coldest air dwells along the floorboards, and the way it meanders up the ridges of your spine, now more pronounced than they've ever been. The hairs of your neck, sand of attention and futility, their forces are far too few to block out the wind's whispering. Its validity is as evident as the color thereof, plain as blowing on canvas, but we see everything, the paint you keep, and the room next door is so thick on that slate that our shoes sink instead. And that air you suck from the space around your resting place enters your lungs and turns to smoke. Not of the nature of your architecture, or the character within the wind. The wind drawn through your throat, busting past your collarbones, instigating mutiny in the ribcage. Luckily, your lungs have been healthy enough yet to ostracize the subversives and breathe out. Breathe out. Though know, the world you and I created is perfect, the one outside of our bedroom is merciless, and when your wind returns to it, it drives and drives and solidifies the pain around your legs. Dude, I have never yet been to Michigan. Your view of it has softened mine a bit. Now that it's where you lay right now, the state itself yields only your name, peace. It is a providence and no great change. We are only unless we always were, but naked now, dear. The truth is, in another world, I've never heard your name before. The truth is, in another world, you just didn't love me anymore. Dear, the truth is, in another world, we loved each other so much. You didn't have to die. The truth is, there's another world where you live longer because I was never in your life. The truth is, in another world, you told me your favorite flower, and I rose to the occasion. I swore I'd never, ever heard you like that other fellow did. But dear, the truth is, everything me has its thorns, and I am so sorry. Saying I love you has always been a little scary to me, but if it's just because I say it sometimes quietly, doesn't mean it's any less deafening when I hear it in my thoughts, my ear mind telling me you love that girl, you love that girl, you love that girl. Maybe whether it's the weather wind whining wailing through your limbs, or the lack of substance in your arteries and in your head. A stone whose sound fills up your ears for the rain that used to turn you gold, disguising down my tears. But you didn't hear me when I said it, and it led me to wonder if, like in the movies, you could still see me, waving, dreaming, eternally screaming as you sink beneath the surface of the sedimenting sentiment obscured your view of you. You burned an imprint in my retinas 30 years ago. You've always been so bright, like the morning of a fresh snow, and you are a filter stretched over my eyes everywhere I go, and within the illusion of things mattering, that is one of the only. I used to listen to your songs and get sad only because I knew I could without consequence, because I would come home. And your cheesy lyrics about protecting me would become a reality. Now I just don't touch them anymore. Now I just don't touch them anymore! And that night, we drove home a couple of years ago, and you sat in your dance near the radio, and you were smiling at me. And I smiled because you were looking so pretty. And my grin was also partially, so you couldn't see eternally. But I couldn't help remembering that night you confided in me, but you believed. And after death, the human soul and memory is erased from reality in my mind. Scream to know how you can be happy. That it must be ignorance prompting your clapping or the thought escapes your mind that we are nothing after we die. For how else can one bear the boundless, brain breaking, soul shaking catastrophe, catastrophe, catalytic malady, tragedy, burden? Don't smile. Unless, for each and every mile, that curious view gracing your smile was the fact that you were perfectly aware.
somehow you know stare sent me, it's alright. It's okay. We're all gonna die someday be on the dance to it anyways. And you took my hand and you'd never let it go until your muscles could contract no more after your brain let your blood go. And the wind whistling maliciously finally pushed, punctured, and poisoned your vessel. My pain is to mile. You are the rose that I will never let go of. And though your petals litter the puddles of rain, when the wind ripped you from your stuff, they still go gold. When I go gold, I will be buried next to you. And see that blood I've been thirsting for when it rains, dear. That wind got the better of you. And that smoke escaped your lips, but I swear I saw it quicker. And I'll bet it was your soul that I glimpsed. And I hope you were wrong about death and I will see you again, but for now you're dead. And no amount of suffering will ever bring you back again, and that pain that sucked you down six foot deeds but begun to cry. And with my words, I will make it worse, like tearing myself apart to the point of death will bring me closer to you again. And your lungs were healthy enough so far to exhale and away your poisons and sing a song, and now you're gone and I can't enjoy them. My ears are still ringing, and my eyes will never adjust, and all of your golden rain on my window pane will wash my depression away like rain on dust. Dear, depression open your doors for the wind to skip the floorboards, 